We have two guests to join in. Lavish Bandari, first up, the founder director of Indicus Analytics. And in a bit, we'll get Somitra Chaudhary, former member of the Planning Commission, uh, to join in as well. Um, gentlemen, morning to all of you. We have with us here uh, Abhay Lejavala, to, who's going to quiz you guys as well. But uh, Mr. Bandari, I just want to start off with the. Uh, yes, Mr. Bandari, I just want to start off with you. Uh, it was a 10 quarter high this time around when we got the Q1 FY15 GDP numbers at 5.7%. And many indicated that this is a materially strong start to the year, but it might not, uh, you know, uh, pan out in the next couple of quarters because the industrial numbers came off a very low base. What's the sense you're getting about um, uh, how the rest of the year may pan out and how we might end FY15 as far as the GDP numbers are concerned? So first, uh, this is the first uh, quarter estimates, and these are the first estimates, uh, and they're provisional. So uh, first, I would expect these numbers to eventually be much lower than what, what's, what's come out. Uh, they do tend to be adjusted a bit uh, mm. uh, sometimes. So the second is that definitely there is an improvement, and no one can deny that. And that improvement comes in from two, uh, two, two sources. One is there is a certain cyclicality even in during, during bad times, mm. and we're seeing some of that. Another is, of course, an expectational uh, part. Uh, but inherently, in the, if you look at the very DNA of the Indian economy in, in rural areas, in small towns, you're not really finding this kind of growth. Okay. Uh, well, uh, uh, Lavish, uh, we have Abhay Lejavala also with us. He's our guest editor today, uh, the uh, managing director and head of ec uh, uh, research at Deutsche Equities. Abhay, uh, you, uh, both uh, Dr. Chaudhary and uh, Lavish are connected at the moment. Oh, excellent. <laughs> uh, well, uh, welcome to both of you. Um, well, my first question is to Lavish. Uh, Lavish, what I want to particularly ask you is that I know that Indicus is amongst those very few consultants who actually uh, put out GDP and you all drill down to the district level. That's the kind of data that uh, you, all, you all work on. So I want to, I mean, you mentioned that you're not seeing that recovery in small towns, but what I want to understand from you is what is the feeling you're getting? So while we may not yet have seen the recovery, do you believe that the data points are suggesting that small town India uh, and, you know, at the district level as well, the optimism that big town India is seeing, is it percolating down to that? And would also be interesting to know from you, uh, you know, which are the regions in the country where you are seeing optimism, uh, more optimism, and regions where you're seeing relatively less optimism? So one has only a few data points, mm. but I would put it the other way around. I sometimes feel these days that the optimism in urban and large urban centers is actually much lower than the optimism that one finds in smaller areas, uh, including in rural areas. So where optimism, and this is an optimism as we all know is a very short term, uh, has many short terms ups and downs, uh, but where optimism is concerned, there is, I think, almost un un uh, a complete uniform distribution across India. Uh, and there is uh, generally has actually percolated down to, to the masses. Mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, just to button over here and get Dr. Chaudhary in as well. Uh, Dr. Chaudhary, what's your sense? I mean, I, to go through, go with what uh, Lavish was just saying, if you looked at the index of industrial production, for instance, uh, the latest number, the index is 170 points, and the index in 2011 was 166 points, uh, April of uh, 2011. So, while there would be growth because things fell back so much, uh, in terms of the total output, we are still where we were about three, four years ago. Uh, Dr. Chaudhary, what is your sense of this 5.7% growth? Uh, can this be the normalized rate for the full year? Well, uh, I think the first thing one should uh, point out is with the quarterly numbers, if you look at all of the quarterly numbers in all the detail, mm -hmm. is that uh, while many things haven't changed dramatically from the previous quarters, there is no deterioration, almost anything that you can look at. Uh, everything is either where it was or there is an improvement. Mm -hmm. I think that's a significant, a significant departure from previous quarters. If you look at the corporate data, for the other the top line or the EBITDA growth or the PAT growth, it's a, the same story seems to be true, that while there is no remarkable improvement in anything particularly, but there is no deterioration in anything. So what you're getting is, well, a net gain. I think net gains are what you see in the Q1. As far as your other question which you asked some other guest is what you'd expect for the rest of the year. In the first quarter we are sort of benefiting from the higher agricultural growth of last year. 
with the first quarter of the financial year is the last quarter of the crop year. So you got 3.5% growth in agriculture. It's unlikely to be repeated in the second quarter and the third quarter. Probably we might see small negative numbers. So that would certainly pull down overall growth. While focusing on non-farm sector growth, I think the improvement will continue, maybe at a slightly slower pace in the Q2 and may pick up a bit in Q3 because whatever numbers we have for Q2, the core index for July, for instance, isn't something which is heartwarming. Mm. And we have no reason to believe August will be significantly better. Uh, but at the same time, if you look at electricity generation, that's sort of going in double-digit numbers for several months. So I suspect there's some activity going on the ground. It may not, it may not give you very large numbers, but I think an improvement in non-farm sector growth in Q2, a little bit, and Q3, much more so, and Q4, much more so, is certainly possible. So on the whole, I would say we're looking at perhaps growth of somewhat above five and a half percent if not 5.7 percent it could well be because when you are at a turning point you don't really know how quickly you'll turn till you are actually there <laughs> certainly as uh, Lavish mentioned confidence is high it confidence in the business sector is high confidence in the consuming sector domestic markets are low most people who sell in the domestic market tell me that demand is sluggish but that's not surprising because we've had three or four years of bad growth and three four years of poor employment creation and wage growth so even whatever gains were there till before that, um, certainly were significant, but the last three years there has been a slowdown. It'll take a little while to get out of it, but I think the numbers tend to either show that basically A, there's no deterioration on any score, and B, if there's an, and there is improvement in some. I think that is a very positive reading. Right. Okay. No, that's, that's, that's very interesting. So that means uh, you do believe that uh, a cyclical recovery is definitely underway. And uh, it's interesting that you highlight that uh, growth could be, you know, about 5.5% uh, or so. Mm -hmm. So where does that bring us uh, re-inflation? Mm -hmm. uh, what, what is, if, if growth is coming back, uh, and as you rightly said, when growth is turning, it's uh, very difficult to anticipate how fast it will turn. Uh, where do you see the Reserve Bank of India coming in on this? What is therefore the outlook? Do you think that supply side constraints could come back to the fore if growth is coming back as fast as it is right now? See, I'll, I'll restrict myself to the first part of your question. The, typically, the growth, growth inflation trade-off, uh, you look at the manufactured goods because that's where any attempt at squeezing monetary policy and controlling or reducing demand uh, has an, can have an impact on prices. Now, manufactured goods prices are running at around 3%. Uh, it's much lower than it has been mm. historically for many years now. So I think that growth is at, you know, 5% or 5.5%. Uh, there is really, I mean, no reason to believe that, uh, let's say, continued tough monetary policy is going to have, a reasonable, uh, have an impact on inflation because it's all coming from the primary goods sector, particularly primary food, uh, where uh, the issues are quite different. Rice, for instance, uh, fixes itself on the normalized prices of uh, our international prices. Uh, rupee has weakened in the last one year, roughly about 14 months by about 14 or 15 percent. That's the inflation you get in rice. Wheat inflation is 3 percent. Uh, fruit and vegetables is all about supply chains not being there. Milk, eggs, and meat and fish again, basically, in cases of marketing and strong demand. Uh, are you going to get anything by actually, you know, working the monetary policy route? I have great doubts on that. But, you know, at the end of the day, it's a judgment call uh, for, for everybody. Everybody is comfortable with a particular path, and uh, they may take whatever path they might take. But I don't think that we are in a situation where we are uh, with growth at much lower than normal levels the last, if you look at the last 20 years, is running much below what levels we have run. And to actually suggest that, you know, a slight pickup by half a percent or one percent of growth could have a significant impact on price levels, I sort of don't buy into that. Okay, Lavish, what is your uh, experience of granular data on inflation? Do you think this time around uh, it could be restricted only to uh, vegetables and we will get away from making it a generalized inflation? No, I'm not so sure. Um, and in fact, we are already seeing a wage inflation come up, even just, just a little bit of change in expectations, and we start to see that. 
So I'm not so sure uh, that, that it will be so, uh, that there will be just islands of inflation. I think uh, even with a one percentage point improvement in growth, uh, there would be a significant impact on inflation. And I think we need to be uh, careful about, uh, about this eventuality. I also believe that uh, you know, the, the, the growth pattern is differing across India. I think that, that right now what uh, the, the, the growth numbers that we are seeing, they do tend to be geographically uh, concentrated towards the west. Uh, a bit more to the south, but definitely not so much in the in the in the northern parts of India. Uh, so I think that will also have, uh, as it plays out, I think it will also have some impact on inflation and how it is spread. Okay. Well, uh, can we squeeze in one final question then, uh, uh, Dr. Chaudhary? I just wanted to ask you about the trade-off between manufacturing growth and services growth, because you know that's a discussion that we were having yesterday as well as to how the economy should now move to perhaps a manufacturing-led growth. Uh, what is your experience or what's your assessment of how things may shape up going ahead between manufacturing and services growth and where the higher growth potential is going forward? Now, I'll just add what uh, Abhay's uh, team brought in. You know, what uh, Sonia is referring to is uh, Abhay's teammate uh, Sanjeev Sanyal has written a paper saying that India is shifting away from the services-led growth of the last uh, three decades towards the East Asian model of growth. He's going by uh, Prime Minister Modi's uh, Make in India, Manufacture in India uh, slogan. Uh, so I think the question is uh, do you see that happening uh, Dr. Chaudhary is that your interpretation also that we are swerving away to an East Asian model of growth and is that possible you see uh, it's not entirely true that we are a services sector led growth I mean manufacturing has been a bit downbeat but if you look at even 2010-11 or first quarter 2011-12 data manufacturing growth was pretty high Service sector was higher still, but manufacturing growth is pretty high. So really the last three years, they've been terribly down in the dumps. And manufacturing needs to actually grow for a variety of reasons, including the fact that on aggregate demand side, demand is, incremental demand is going to, go, going to be mainly manufactured goods. We can't import that. Uh, jobs can only come, quality jobs can significantly come only in manufacturing. Manufacturing has got a beating for a variety of reasons, uh, starting from the difficulty of setting up additional manufacturing capacity to the collapse of domestic demand. I think these situations will change, manufacturing will take an uptake, but that's a short term outlook. What I think the Prime Minister Mr. Modi wanted to talk about is a medium to longer term outlook that manufacturing has to expand its base, it must find space to grow. Uh, it wasn't getting space to grow. And I think for that, a whole range of policies, whether it is to do with the changes in maybe the way land is acquired uh, after the new Land Acquisition Act, uh, to the ways that you know certain kind of regulations uh, impinge upon the manufacturing sector, these will have to be reformed. And if that happens, I have absolutely no doubt that manufacturing can be a great engine for growth and a great engine for employment creation. Okay, uh, Dr. Chaudhary, Navish, uh, we have to uh, end this discussion over here. Sure. We would have loved to continue with this uh, conversation on whether uh, there is going to be a tectonic shift, a paradigm shift from services-led uh, growth to manufacturing growth, but we'll postpone that to another day. Thank you very much for joining us uh, in this special edition of Bazaar where we have a guest editor with us.